Lightning, a large static electricity show in a thunderstorm. 80% of lightning is in cloud, 20% hits the ground. That's one fifth of the lightning that we're really concerned about. And it occurs because we have positive and negative areas of charge in a storm. When you have negative charge, you have more electrons. When you have positive charge, you have less electrons. Electrons will move by being physically stripped. It can also be transferred due to temperature differences, even phase changes between liquid and ice. And in thunderstorms, all that's going on. It's highly theoretical, not completely understood. Uh, you can also move this charge around by shearing electrons off of ascending particles and transferring them to descending particles. Large charge differences can begin to tear apart air molecules even more, and then plasma can develop. These are areas where there are no electrons on the air molecules. Very good conductors of electricity. Air is not, but plasma is. So if you have a big enough potential between positive and negative, we get the beginnings of a lightning stroke. From the cloud's perspective, now we're talking about a negative stroke here. There's a positive stroke, too. We'll come back to that. But in a negative stroke, you have an avalanche of negative charge from the base of a thunderstorm or from some, some point in the lower part of the storm, usually. We call these leaders or step leaders. They're essentially invisible, and they're called step leaders because they start and stop and progress in a kind of a step fashion. And they leave behind a plasma trail. Now, from the uh, ground's perspective, streamers, positive in this case, come up. Now, statistically, if it's tall and pointy and electrically conductive, it's probably a better streamer candidate, but lightning will always solve the problem of least resistance any way it can. So it's not always the tallest object that wins. In the picture, there's a streamer that's unused there coming out of the tree. You'll see that little tiny piece coming out of there that was not chosen by the step leaders. So you make the connection. Electric potential can be amazingly large, 10 million to near a billion volts in some bolts of electricity, amazing. And not necessarily a tall as object, remember, but boom, here we go. Return stroke, 96% uh, of the luminosity is in that, and it actually travels up. It occurs very fast. We see it as just a simple flash. There's a diagram. Step leaders kind of forking their way down, trying to figure it all out. And remember that this is, uh, a, it's in air, so it's subject to you know, moving around. Various channels occur. It's a turbulent kind of thing. But in this case, the tree was selected. Dart leaders, uh, this is the axiom, don't waste a good ionized channel. So if there's already a short in the atmosphere between a negative and a positively charged area, and if you can find charge nearby, the lightning will flash once, twice, three times, just trying to get as much as it can out of that ionized channel before it breaks down and falls apart. Thunder, of course, is uh, all lightning has thunder. It's the expansion of the gas because of how hot lightning is, and it's a shock wave in our ear. And while the light travels instantaneously, the thunder does not. And that leads to our rule 1001, 1002, 1003. When you get to 1005, that's one mile away. 1010, two miles away. It's pretty good if, you can, if you're confident about connecting the sound lightning stroke. Let's talk about thunder length. Now, here's the, the diagram I want to show you. So you'll hear sound all the way along the path of lightning from the base of the cloud to the ground here. And so you're talking about a difference of about, oh, 2.4 seconds here. If it's long thunder, though, you add the two together, and now you'll hear thunder from uh, 8.4 seconds to 14.4 seconds, so about 6 seconds in length. So the longer sound of thunder implies a long stroke, probably in cloud and probably directed more toward you. Nothing special about heat lightning. It has nothing to do with the temperature of the lightning, but rather it is the temperature of you when you're observing it. It's probably hot outside, nighttime, clear. If there's a thunderstorm in Iowa hundreds of miles away, lightning at the top of that storm can be visible on the horizon, and the flash can easily travel the length of Missouri, and you'll see that. Sheet lightning, nothing but reflected bolts of lightning. Anvil lightning is a positive lightning stroke. Come back to that here in just a second, but that's the so-called bolt from the blue. Then we have ball lightning, highly theoretical uh, plasma type of ball. Moves slow, can explode. Haven't been caught on tape, and it's, it can be produced in a laboratory, but not much in Mother Nature, haven't seen much. Positive lightning is bad. About 5% of it is positive. It actually comes from the positive power of the storm up in the anvil, top of the storm. And the reason it's dangerous is because it strikes away from the main thunderstorm. You may not even know you're in trouble. It comes from the anvil, can turn at a 90 degree angle. It's juicier and has more voltage potential, lasts longer. It's connected to forest fires, power disruptions, and these sprites. The last thing we'll talk about, these little jets that were in informally ob observed by pilots for years and finally videotaped by sensitive camera equipment and observed from the International Space Station. So we have these sprites and blue jets. These are all electrical phenomena that emanate from the tops of the thunderstorms and go all the way up into the ionosphere.